education isn't such trouble. All over the world, not only here. Everywhere, I hear only people complaining. Our system doesn't work. What is, in my opinion, the real problem is that we have forgotten what is education for. We've told that it is to prepare our children for a job or for a situation that we think they will face. The future is unknown. What we need to do is to prepare our children to be able to face the unpredictable, which is what the future is. Education is not about creating somebody ready to fit into a pre-organized position. So the purpose of education is much broader. It's to help people to become full human beings and members of the human community. The task of education must change. What school really ought to be for is fostering the growth and development of, of children. From the earliest years, it must be developmental, in the most, you know, in the deepest sense, developmental, brain developmental. And then into, um, into the elementary years, it must be about problem solving and social development. And I think in the later years, it really has got to be about you know, motivation, mission, and purpose. You know? What are your unique capabilities? What are your unique interests? You know, what's, what are you going to bring to the world that, um, that makes you something special? Traditional education can't do that. Well, the underlying assumption in traditional education is that teaching is telling. So what we're here to do is we're here to tell students stuff. It, the assumption is that every child in a class can get through the same amount of stuff within that nine-month academic year. And of course, this is absurd. Everyone knows who's been in a classroom that not every child will proceed at the same pace. But every child is destined to be something. And maybe there's a way to do education that would kind of have something for everyone. Many have written or spoken of what school should look like from a developmental perspective, but nobody, nobody um, created the complete uh, developmental package that Montessori did. Maria Montessori spent 50 years of her life of serving children, and she was able to unravel the nature of the human being and produce a method through which we all could develop to our full potential. It is just in the last two, three decades that science has developed the technology and the assessment tools to prove what Maria Montessori knew a hundred years ago, just by observing children. In a Montessori community, the children learn that every member of that community is equally valuable, that everybody brings something that nobody else has, that my gift is different than yours. Our job is to remove all the obstacles so that the gift can shine. It's about deep respect for self, others, for the wider world and the community and the spirit. And so if we start with respect within oneself and with the child, the individual child, you know, within the family, which is within the neighborhood, which is within our city and within our, you know, broader society, that's how we get to to change. Montessori began her work in a very low income area outside of Rome. As a medical doctor, she was very interested in scientific observation. So in 1907, she started what was called the Casa dei Bambini, the first children's house. And it was really to see how younger children, ages two and a half to six, responded to the same kind of developmental materials that she had used with older children who had special needs. And what she found is that these younger children were able to use the materials in order to teach themselves. These children were called the miracle children. And why they called them miracle children wasn't so much because of the precocious academics, 
But what really attracted people were the way the children were self-managing, the way they had self-discipline, even when the adults weren't in the room, the, the grace and courtesy that they had with each other and others. That was really what was so unusual. And what she found is that in an environment that is suited to children's needs and the freedom to be able to engage in purposeful activity, that this kind of personality came out in all the children. And she, she described it as really the normal traits of children who have an environment that really helped them do the things that they needed to do to develop. Whether it's a toddler, a preschool, adolescent, they all have different needs at different times, but they all need to have the freedom uh, to really explore and delve into things to the extent that they really can master something, things they're really interested in. In order to do that, we need special uh, kinds of environments at different ages, and we need special kind of training for the adults that interact with the children. So it's quite different than a one size fits all. It's that opportunity to be independent, that opportunity to make choices for yourself um, that I think is really at the heart of um, a Montessori education. When you walk into a Montessori environment, no matter where you are in the world, you're going to see the same materials on the shelves, uh, depending on what the age of the child is. But they're there, whether you're in India, whether you're in Japan, whether you're in the United States, you walk in and the shelves are filled with the materials that we see everywhere. Of course, they're adapted to the culture and traditions because it's the universal child is what we're talking about. And they develop in the same way around the world. And the global work of Montessori is much more extensive than people know. For example, there's Montessori in 110 countries and there are over 22,000 Montessori schools worldwide. It is actually the largest pedagogy in the world. People don't know that. I think Montessori education has never been more relevant than it is now. The child is not just creating himself. He is refashioning humanity. It is our responsibility to give the children that possibility to create a new world, to create new perspectives. When Dr. Montessori was asked to describe the Montessori method, she said that it really is about education for life. It's about each moment in a child's life is a very critical part of their development. And everything that we do in these environments is to help them to be able to interact in life in all levels, whether it be social, emotional, intellectual, etc. What she really saw is that with inherent within each child is a potential to change the world. And that really can only happen if children are given the best environments and treat it with great respect. That is really the essence of the Montessori method. I believe that the new generation of children everywhere around the world will be confronted in 10, 15, 20 years from now with a totally unpredictable world with no precedent and more than ever the world will need a generation of people who will have been prepared to deal with the unpredictable to be adaptable to be able to analyze the situation and find out what is the imaginative creative solution for it and to do it in a manner that will be socially responsible with value in the capacity to relate to others, not only in a peaceful manner, but in a constructive and productive manner. So I don't know of any other system of education today than the Montessori one to optimize that sort of preparation for the future. To make clear that this is not just an alternative. I think it's an imperative.